This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this episode, it's time for a little managed democracy as Jonathan's looking at the weapons of Helldivers 2. This moment was where I realized you could fire mini nukes. In the recording, you can actually hear me go, mini nuke, mini nuke, mini nuke, mini nuke. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the chat. Lol, mini nuke. <laughs> yeah, what a great idea. It's ironic that something so science fiction should nail certain aspects of sort of heavy artillery and its effect and its importance. <laughs> Nothing beats artillery, really. If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe and let us know in the comment section down below what future episodes you'd like to see. And if you want to see us break down more of the Helldivers arsenal in a part two, make sure to let us know by liking the video. Right, it's time to defend Super Earth with the guns of Helldivers 2. That's looking a bit Tavor, inevitably, with that knuckle bow style trigger guard set up and being a bullpup, of course. Yeah, I do I do think this is undeniably Tavor adjacent, especially that squarish blocky of front that's on the current generation X95, although it doesn't doesn't directly match by any means. But even even this legacy <laughs> to ball with the short barrel is is pretty pretty reminiscent. I will note that it's really robust on this on this um, AR23. Much, much thicker and chunkier here. I don't know if I'm not sure why that would be. It's very far diverged from the Tavor, but I think I think the silhouette says it all really. Especially the the later variant, uh, even of this earlier type. So this was the original, this is the um standard Israeli Defense Force configuration. The commercial option became later just a Picatinny rail across the top, which would make it look even more like this gun. Gun's decent. It's got some, feels like it has some heft to it. One detail I'm sure you'd appreciate is um, you have to really manage your magazines. Like if you toss away a magazine with half your, it's half full. You, you can't like repocket it, I guess, to simulate the intensity of the bug fight. Big fan of that. That's the kind of thing I would sort of advocate for over and above, in this case, certainly trying to replicate, a, a slavishly replicate firearm is that sort of detail. The magazine can hold as many rounds as it can hold. Not like a, a, my beloved, but ridiculous pulse rifle, but it's 99 rounds. And Starship Troopers where they just seem to have bottomless magazines. Realistic capacity and if you drop half a mag, that's gone. So your reflexive cod reloads are not going to help you in this, which is good. And it really does help. You know, it's not it's not really a realism thing so much as it's a tension thing, as you rightly say. It was definitely something I had to bully myself out of doing when I started playing this. <laughs> Lots of wasted magazines until I advanced a few levels. Are you able to retrieve them? No, because well, usually you're not in one place for too long either. So the, your tossed magazine is probably under like 13 bug corpses either way. <laughs> It's a real mashup, this thing. There is a bit of MP9 TMP going on, but the shape of the receiver is, I can't decide if it's more MP7 or Ingram with that angle on the lower, it looks like it's meant to be a, a lower nestled into a, sorry, an upper nestled into a lower receiver with that distinctive angle on the back. But yeah, if you had to pick one, I guess it would be the, more like the SPP, because it doesn't have that foregrip which is the, the Steyr pistol based on the machine pistol. Clearly this is a machine pistol, very machine pistol. Conventional looking nine mil cases coming out. A little bit lethargic there. I wouldn't be too happy about how weak that ejection is. Looks like a stoppage is imminent with this thing. It works well with the frantic nature of the game. You can fire it one-handed while running away, whereas the rest, <laughs> a normal two-handed weapon will make you sort of pace backwards, whereas this, you can just sort of point backwards and flee from big bucks. That's actually really good. That's kind of how weapons like this with no butt stop are actually used. <laughs> one-handed, to whom it may concern, which is a sort of very crude take on what they're really used for, which is much more accurately in, in a controlled way to sort of break contact, to keep people's heads down, stop people firing back, typically while you get a VIP away from danger, that kind of thing. This is looking very familiar, except we can sh see our shotgun cartridges in the twin magazines, which is cool, but silly. You don't want to get 
mud and crud inside your magazine tube. It's not so much the magazine that's the problem, because with those holes, the dirt would sort of clear itself out of the way. It's the dirt you'd then be carrying into the chamber on the rounds that's going to cause stoppages. Now, it's a pump action gun, so that's less of a problem. It's going to be a little bit more, you're going to be able to muscle it past the grit and grime to some extent in a way that a semi-auto or automatic gun might choke on. So this is looking a lot like the UTS-15. Unfortunately, we don't have a UTS shotgun, but as far as I understand it, you do have to switch tubes. Gives you the advantage in theory of having different round types. So the real thing has a fairly typical seven round capacity, but twice the mags. Onboard mag, of course, not removable. And I believe you have to switch between the two tubes is where I was going with, the, with that comment. This one, we just keep them both topped up and they both just feed. It's fine, it's a sci-fi take on the weapon. A large belt fed, but feeding from a box, presumably gas operated machine gun. In a way, it looks quite traditional. It's a fairly generic looking gun. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It has got some clean lines. It is almost like a space PK or PKM or something. Now that's a feature there that we've kind of already moved past is having an optic rail on a top cover that moves. It's getting increasingly common to have a very sh have a short top cover and you might have a rail on it, but it, it locks in much more securely than a traditional sheet metal top cover. Or you have your optic mounted to the receiver and the top cover is un unconnected to it. So you don't lose zero, you don't lose accuracy when you reload. This doesn't have that. This is uh, more of, again, more of a sort of PKM-esque gun. Needless to say, as, as much as the handling of this as a sort of LMG or maybe GPMG is pretty realistic, casually tossing it onto your back is not a good idea. And, and if you like your back, that's not a good thing to do. But yeah, kneeling down to reload, the empty box being persistently there is good. And I'm not going to hold this to a high standard of realism because of the, what it is. So I have, I have a head cannon theory while we watch <laughs> okay. we watch us getting shot out from giant bullets into the planet. My head cannon theory is that the, the weapons Ouch. are sort of basic because the troops you play as are so extremely disposable. They think, <laughs> let's not put too much money into these. Like you do Maybe. feel like you're being brainwashed to drop into hell because that's the patriotic thing to do. And you're down there with equipment that is probably not as good as you could get. Okay. But knowing the uh, the death rate of a hell diver, I have to imagine the higher ups are thinking, maybe don't give them really expensive weaponry, not unless not until they prove themselves. Which I suppose is as you advance and level up, you do get cooler, more high tech weapons. So maybe there is something to yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I think we have to assume that, um, and actually, it makes more sense in that respect than something like Halo, where you're the most elite soldier possible and you're still using this kind of technology. If you're more of an expendable grunt and this kind of thing still being made. And it's, it's kind of plausible that it still would be, you know, see to be tweaked for presumably zero G, zero atmosphere use as well. Another pretty conventional looking battle rifle. Seems to be firing the same rounds as the, what I assume was an assault rifle from earlier on, the bullpup, but it does appear to be semi-auto and a low capacity. It's a little more powerful. Um, yeah. It's a lot easier to get to the squishy bits or the weak points of an enemy when you've got a marks, what's called the marksman rifle. What I'd have suggested, not that anyone has to pay attention to me, is polymer cased ammo or the case telescope system that was developed a few years ago. Something something akin to that. So you'd still have the punch of a conventional weapon. You still have case ejection, but it wouldn't be Victorian style brass cases flying out of the gun. They really don't fly out of the guns enough. I know I'm saying it a lot, but um, same with this pseudo DMR thing. They just kind of, they appear very clearly in your eye line. It's not projecting hard enough. They're not spinning enough either. Definitely an AK Soviet style reload in there as well. Reaching yeah. under underarm. Yeah, I will say that under underarm cocking looked a little bit awkward, like it might be hard to do in real life. Why wouldn't you just switch the cocking handle? You can do that now. They can definitely do it. Right, we now have something 
very reminiscent of this. Which I have on the wrong shoulder. There we go. The Carl Gustav. Proper steel tube, none of your throwaway, well, fiberglass usually. And notably, well, pistol grip, of course, some sort of optic. And what really makes me think this is what this is being based on is, well, firstly, the, we have a very flared back end here. And we also, if we cock it, and then we pull down this system here, and we can then use the other knob to pivot this open. They don't, the, the rounds don't look dissimilar in the scheme of things to, to the real thing. They do have a rim on the base because it has, it has to sit into here. So this moves it out of the way, shove it in, close it up, and then you're ready to, ready to shoot. Now in real life, this is a crew served weapon because it's a, an absolute chunk. To be effective, you've got to have a, an assistant gunner loading this thing for you. You can see here, if, if you, you need to load it via the backpack full of rounds, but if a teammate carries the backpack for you, they become huh. the assistant gunner to load Excellent. for you. Excellent. And it like triples your rate of fire, because obviously it's a lot quicker to get someone else to reload that than it is to do it yourself. No, that's good stuff. For a sort of futuristic game, that might be the first time I've seen a, a light weapon like this crew served like that. I'm sure one of the more realistic games must have done it, but great way to draw a little bit of realism in for the benefit of the gameplay. The way, although you wouldn't do it with weapon in hand, obviously, but the way the assistant gunner keeps their hand on the weapon like that. If you if you watch footage of um, soldiers doing this for real, well, they must have, basically, because it looks... It's not like you just run up, magically slamming around, and then can just saunter off. You you stay... You're, you work as a team, and that, that reflects that quite well. Okay, this is... This is an odd beast. Magazine on the side, not something we typically see. Case ejections, insane on this one. They appear on the other side of the gun and then they drop straight down. That makes no sense at all. The mag is, I was gonna say it's a coffin mag, but it isn't really. It's just a double stack into single feed, needlessly reducing the capacity in theory. What is the capacity on this, today? Oh, I think it was about 40? 40, 45. 40. 45. Seems a bit high for the size of the mag. Although, I mean, it, the body is very wide, so I think they think they're going for some sort of a multi-stack. Probably the closest thing we've got to this, although it has the Sterling's curved mag, is the Sterling S11, which has that square boxy body that this has. We display it in here with two bayonets fitted, not because it was ever intended to mount two bayonets, but it makes it look very sci-fi, I think. Now, the Sterling magazine's 34 rounds. Which is which is really impressive for such a short mag. Um, this is this is a fantastic mix of capacity and size and weight. This is kind of Lanchester capacity with this form factor. Well, not this form factor, but this size. The stock is a bit a bit rubbish, double strut, almost like a Galil or something. But it doesn't seem to have any adjustment. Yeah, that stock really ought to be a bit more ergonomic than that. I think we've, we've gone for sci-fi aesthetic over what would be ergonomic and practical. So we've carried over Picatinny rails, we've carried, carried over some features that might persist in, into, the, into the future. Something that's never going away now is ultimately adjustable butt stocks, pistol grips, fore grips, that kind of thing. We do have sci-fi reticle disease here, where there's a lot going on <laughs> in the scope, but none of it does anything. It's At the end of the day, it, it could just be a crosshair or a circle in the middle, or ordinary crosshairs, full width. I always enjoy some functionality to these sci-fi scopes, because otherwise you're just, you're, this is this is less effective than a modern scope with a even an old fashioned reticle, because you're obscuring your target essentially. And of course your windage and elevation knobs are essentially greeblies on a weapon, on a game of this nature. It, it wouldn't look like a scope if it didn't have them, but you, they're not there to be adjusted. If I were to shoot a lot of these targets with like a rifle or something, you could, you'd actually be able to see the round bounce off. Oh, really? And you can see on even like the bugs, there's, there's bugs with armored fronts that close up. If you hit them with an anti-material rifle, you see like bits of their carapace just blow off like its armor and chunk away. Uh, okay. So it might, it might not be super clear in the gameplay, but while you're playing it, while you're playing, there's definitely a tangible difference in, in how much your round is punching through 
whatever you're shooting. I'm definitely getting the those robots getting one-shotted. You definitely get a sense that this is something much more powerful. And you might think, so what? But there are plenty of representations of things like the Barrett in games where it takes two shots or three shots to kill somebody. If you're going to have an AMR in a game, I think it's got to have that kind of, at least just have high damage. And here we seem to have a lot more going on in terms of terminal effect. So it's, it's taking into account what it's hitting, which is good. And it's representing that in a somewhat realistic way. So we've got strikes on armor, look with lots of sparks, large pieces blowing off, maybe a bit too much, for, <laughs> but then who knows? Who knows what type of round this is? It's almost like someone's taken an AGS-17 off the mount. So it's belt-fed, grenades. You've got a, but that means you've got a length of belt hanging out of the weapon. I mean, that's probably, a, to be fair, that's probably a better solution than either the harmonica three-round carousel thingy that, that we've got <laughs> from the China Lake program in, this, in the uh, US, or the three-round pump action. You're probably better off just having a, a length of rounds hanging out of the gun, quite frankly, because then you could have your three or you could have five and it might still be a bit wieldy so there's nothing really wrong with that the barrel is super short though because of the configuration that's a very short barrel it's like shorter than something like a, an mgl a milk core now they don't need to have very long barrels to be effective the sort of close range video game grenade launcher thing in hell divers 2 at least is the grenade will ricochet off the front of the bug armor which bounces back into me if <laughs> in a few occasions <laughs> there's been once or twice where i've got a bit close to the grenade launcher and ah. pinged off at the environment at my own feet <laughs> <laughs> typically you're going to have an impact fuse for something like that uh but partly for that reason because it you know it's possible to bounce things off hard surfaces in real life as well and you definitely don't want that to happen so that that is a sort of gamified thing but why not Why the cool looking flamethrower? I think we've reached a point now where flamethrowers are, people know that it needs to be look, needs to look like a stream of liquid, because it is. They know it needs to stick and burn. First time you use it, there's a nice little moment where it's just liquid coming out before the igniter sparks. So yep. there's like a little delay between pulling the trigger and seeing the effect in the game, which harkened back to a lot of what you said about how flamethrowers actually work. It's nice to see. And we also get little drops of fuel dropping to the ground, still burning as you sling it. Now, the, there is a problem with slinging it in that the igniter is still ignited. So your, your lovely cloak should be on fire at this point. The bigger issue as ever is the fuel tank is not going to be big enough. For what for the amount of fuel we're seeing be like it's like having a 500 round magazine that's the size of a 30 round magazine having a what should be a backpack fuel tank be the size of a soda stream is not plausible but i think we're more inclined to overlook that because of the obvious constraints yeah is it really worth having a backpack fuel tank appear appear magically on your back out of nowhere just to tick a realism box when that in itself would be unrealistic Really blocky looking thing. I struggle to differentiate this from the first weapon I saw, to be honest. This is the Space P90. It is a bit, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So in this case, the blockiness, which is a sort of design choice generally with these firearms in this game, is accommodating a take on the P90. That is our old friend. The P90. It's not that close, to be fair. They haven't done the, the sort of Call of Duty P90 in space approach. They've, they've taken the idea of a top-mounted magazine and a bullpup configuration, and they've done their own thing with it. What's a bit weird <clears throat> is, unlike the P90, which just has this straight receiver integral buttstock setup, this thing has what looks like a magazine housing where you could insert a magazine into it, but it doesn't feed from underneath. It feeds from the top. Maybe it's just a, a very stylized elaborated ejection port system but it needn't be that bulky it's really hard to beat the p90 for compactness although it does maybe need some work up here to make this whole setup a bit shorter for modern optics i did a final clip to just as a nod to your the artillery part of your title, you can find artillery pieces throughout the maps to take control of. You have to actually load the artillery piece 
munition by munition and the order in which you put the munitions will be the order in which they're fired and you can see see wow. them fire from the the artillery piece and land so if you put high explosive in first that's what you'll get the first time you fire the artillery piece if you put napalm in second you've got to remember okay napalm's next that's so interesting very cool seeing it shoot it's a little weird in that it, it it's like a very short range i guess that it won't always be like that but in this case it's firing almost straight up in order to hit something very very close which seems very dangerous yeah, you can use it anywhere in the map but that was uh okay danger close <laughs> very much so yeah this moment was where i realized you could fire mini nukes and ah. in, the in the recording you can actually hear me go mini nuke mini nuke and us all <laughs> run away mini nuke mini nuke <laughs> i just saw the chat lol mini nuke <laughs> Yeah, what a great idea. A great idea to have. Well, yeah, I can't think of a... We, we've had sort of environmental map-based artillery before, but not... It's ironic that something so science fiction should nail certain aspects of sort of heavy artillery and its effect and its importance. <laughs> Nothing beats artillery, really, except for air power, I suppose. All right, guys, thank you as always for watching. Um, as a lot of you know by now, we have our own YouTube channel over at the Royal Armouries as well. Uh, three museums you can come and visit if you're in the UK and various social media channels. Um, things going on, check the website, check the socials for, for what's happening um, either online or, or in the real world. Regardless, we'll see you again here next week.